Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I uh, know I've been gone for a little while, in fact I've been gone for a long while, I've been gone for almost three months, but I am back and I am back with an absolute banger. I have again broken my personal record um, in terms of trades, I have taken my biggest trade ever at 100R. You guys will know in the last video, which was almost three months ago, uh, I broke my personal record and the record was 50R. I've now doubled that and the record is now 100R. That trade I'm going to break down for you guys, give you a full top down analysis, let you know why I entered, where I set my take profit, why I did that, everything you need to know about that trade. So I'm going to give you guys all of that for free in this video. Um, make sure to stay till the end of the video because I will also have an announcement. Um, but yeah, let's get straight into it. First thing that I want to do is actually shout out the Instagram because although I haven't been posting on YouTube as consistently as I should do, I have been posting every single day on Instagram. So for the three months I haven't posted on YouTube, I've posted every single day on, on Instagram and I've given away free signals. I've given away so much free content. I've given, I've done giveaways that I haven't announced on here. So just follow the Instagram and you get loads and loads of free value. And of course, if you want to join the group, you can join the group. Uh, when I do discounts and things like that on Instagram. So make sure to follow the Instagram. Second thing we're going to do is we're actually going to show a little bit of proof because of course there's going to be doubters if I'm claiming to have caught 100R. So what I'll do is I'll show proof of signal alongside dates and you can't edit this. This is Discord, right? As you can see, I can go through sort of, uh, you know, the, uh, the Discord group and things like that. And you'll see this is Discord. This isn't edited. First thing I'm going to show is the actual entry. So you see on the 29th of uh, August, I sent through this trade saying I wanted to long AUD USD, then sent through the signal as you can see, and you can check this price, these prices here later on uh, through trading view if you wanna confirm that, then updated the, the group when the trade had triggered, then told group to remove risk, which means to set stop loss at break even, then perhaps suggested that you could uh, take partials, then I did actually take partials, so I took 70% off, and then I updated the group when the trade ran all the way until 100 R. So that's the uh, the proof of signal for you guys and the proof that I actually took it. In fact, I'm going to get proof that I actually took it up on the screen right now. So you see, here's more proof. Uh, this is the entry. I think I was halfway through the trade right now or a little bit above halfway through the trade um, on AUD USD. And here's, here's that proof as well. So you've seen all the proof that there is. Uh, if you want to join the group, first link can be, it'll be in the first link in the description. Then what we are going to do is we're going to start the breakdown. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll delete everything off my chart. And then what I'll do is I'll replay the market to before we had that massive push upwards that we actually made profit from. So the first thing that we do always, if you are a new uh, subscriber or someone that's watching this for the first time that isn't subscribed to the YouTube channel, the first thing that we do when we have a blank chart is that we look at trend. So on AUD USD, you can see quite clearly ever since uh, March of 2021, so for uh a year and a half now, the market has been very, very, very bearish, right? So the market is clearly bearish. I'm not going to try and, uh, you know, force it to be bullish because I want to buy or anything like that. The market externally, which means the market on the higher time frames, is clearly bearish. Then what I'll do is I'll look on the lower time frames, go from something like the daily to the four hour and see whether the market is respecting supply or demand, right? Uh, normally, if we're in a bearish market, we'd expect for the market to respect supply. So that's what we're going to look to do. We're going to look to confirm that. And lo and behold, what you see is that the market right here is clearly respecting supply, right? And the market's bearish. And so we can expect for the market to continue to respect supply. So what I'll do is I'll mark out the next area of supply that we can potentially try and short from. And that would be this, right? The reason that's the next area of supply we could potentially short from is if we take a look at the market and we look back, you see the market respected this supply zone, sold off, then formed more supply right here and tapped into that supply zone and then sold off. And that, and therefore, if we look at, you know, the market's very repetitive, it does what it's done before. If it's done that twice now, the likelihood it's going to do it a third time is very, very high. All right. So we're expecting for the market to push upwards and then have a move to the up, uh, move to the downside. Excuse me. I then thought to myself, I know at this point, 100 percent or highly likely we're going to get a move to the downside. So why don't I try and buy upwards? to that supply and then sell downwards from that supply when we reach that supply, right? And so I started to look for reasons to try and buy it. And I found that the market was inside of a demand zone, right? You'll see if we look left, clear demand, right? You can see that is a nice bit of selling followed by, you know, immense buying that broke structure above a high like this, right? So we'd say in this case, 
the market is inside of demand. Another thing I noticed was the market actually had a little bit of liquidity to take. You can see quite clearly right here that the market formed a little bit of uh, support that the market then decided to come and take. Right, so we, what we've had right here is we've had a liquidity grab and the market tap into demand. Both signs that the market is about to push upwards. And that makes sense because remember, our higher time frame bias is that the market needs to come to this supply zone before initiating the next leg down. Then what I did was I moved to something like the five minute just to see what structure was like. And I put, plotted on the Asian range indicator. So let me do that right now. There we go. So you should now be able to see this is the Asia range. What happened was we came into our higher, higher time frame area of demand uh, during the Asia session. We then had a minor Asia session manipulation, right? So you'll see if I zoom in and I go to something like the one minute now, right? Uh, right, And you'll see what happened was we had the market actually take out our Asia low. So this was our Asia low. Market took it out, maybe formed a little bit of liquidity, took that out as well. And then we had that big move upwards. Right, then what the market did was it respected the demand. So what we had was we had this area of demand right here and market came into that area of demand and pushed upwards very well. This is more confluence to me that the market's about to have a big move upwards all the way up into the area of supply up here, right? Another thing that I liked about this area of demand right here was that the market actually formed liquidity. So same way, if I go up to something like the four hour really quickly, same way we had liquidity on the four hour in the form of equal lows and then the market take that out, we had the same thing happen on the one minute, right? We had liquidity in the form of equal lows or retail support, market take out that liquidity and then start to buy upwards, right? So for me, I was thinking now, I wanna get one final confirmation or I need to find some sort of demand to try and enter my longs from. So let's play this market, let's see what happens. You'll notice the market, right, gives me that final confirmation it breaks structure. This break of structure, I would call a change of character because it happened after the market tapped into demand. So let's mark that out as a change of character. I then just wanted to find an area of demand to, to enter from and exactly what I was looking for, I found. I found this demand zone right here. It was perfect. It had that engulfing candle. It had massive volume at that point. Um, and of course, all the prior analysis made me think that I wanted to long from this point. Just to summarize while we're on the lower time frames. What happened was we had the Asia manipulation occur. We had the market tap into liquidity induced demand. What I mean by that is uh, an area of demand that the market had taken liquidity for to get to that area of demand. And then also we got that change of character to the upside telling me it's uh, uh, the market is still bullish. It's a good time to buy. So then I didn't waste any time at all. I set limits at this point, right? So if I just show you guys right there and I plot on that stop loss, that was my entry. In terms of take profits, I did of course take partials and I took uh, the majority of my position off at this Asia high for 22R, but then I left the majority or the, the, the remainder of my position uh, all the way up to the area of supply. And that was that risk to reward of about 100R. So you can see 96.9R. I'm gonna round that up to 100R, right? So if I show you guys that trade right now, I show you guys the trigger really quickly. Right, let's wait for the market to come back into our demand zone. There we go. And then we sort of extend this and go to a higher time frame. You'll see that full move occur. So I go to something like the four hour for you really quickly. You'll see that movement upwards happen very, very quickly. So let me show you guys that. What we had was we had that full move upwards for 100R and that was my full take profit. And then, as I said before, the market sold off. So not only did we get, if I show you guys, a sniper entry, right? So not only did we get a sniper entry all the way back here, if it wants to load, let's give it a second, right? So this entry right here was not only a sniper en uh, entry, we also got a sniper exit. Look at that. As soon as I exited this trade, the market completely dumped. And that is the beauty of smart money. And that's the trade. It was very simple. Although we did have a lot involved, we had Asia session manipulation, we had liquidity inducement, we had market structure and price action in the form of trend because we looked at internal structure and external structure. And then finally, supply and demand, which we need for all of our trades when we trade SMC. But when you combine all of them together and you explain it, it's very, very logical and, you know, makes sense. Right. So that's why we entered that trade. That's why we take profit at where we take profit for that trade. Fairly simple trade, you know, not overcomplicated at all. And that's the beauty of SMC, 100R, right? And you guys, in fact, if I tell you th this month right here that I entered this trade, August, 
was a very bad month. I think I was at break even for the whole month when I took this trade. But I trusted my edge, right? Our edge is risk to reward. Our win rate is low, but our risk to reward is high. Because we had a low win rate and because August is traditionally a bad month, August, I was at break even for when we took this trade. And I think I took this trade at the end of the month. But because of my risk to reward and because of my patience and because of the experience that I have trading SMC, I didn't, you know, adjust stop losses. I didn't get emotionally invested in any of my trades. I let winners run and I cut losers short. And the edge brought us back to being profitable. I'm not being only a bit profitable, but being massively profitable. 100 R risking 1% is you doubling your account. Think of what that would do for you. If you're on a 100K prop firm account, let's say, for example, and you double your account, right, and you get 80% uh, of your profits, that's 80 grand in your pocket from one trade. And that's not even bad risk management or anything like that. That's using 1% risk. Although I do recommend using 0.5% risk, even then that's 50 grand profit uh, of which you'd keep 80% of that, right? So that's that's the beauty of SMC. If you want to join the group and get access to signals like that, get two weekly calls that are each two hours long, um, get access to the largest SMC community in the world, get access to a course, get access to a library of 300 plus hours of call content, get access to private projects like an EA that I'm working on and a prop firm that I'm working on only for group members. All of that will be in the first link in the description. Look forward to seeing all of you guys today.